Hey folks, Armin Hammer here, and today we're going to be talking about the open signups because CrossFit just last night officially released the amount of people that signed up for the 2020 Open, and the number is a bit of a drop from the 2019 Open. Let's go ahead and take a look at this article by Morning Chalk Up. Justin LaFranco put this up last night. Um, I think a bunch of the people that were doing media stuff at the CrossFit Games, we all received the numbers around the same time um, CrossFit released it to us via their Discord that we all joined when we were there at the Games. Uh, so the people who are still in the Discord got the official numbers. I think a lot of people were asking CrossFit HQ for these exact uh, pieces of data. So Morning Chalk Up has a pretty good article on it. We're going to take a look at it. 239,106 athletes register for the 10th CrossFit Games Open by Justin LaFranco. Also, I love this picture. I don't know who any of these people are, but I absolutely love this picture. I particularly love this guy right here. This guy right here is over everything. He's just over everybody's shit. He's over absolutely everything that ever had to do with CrossFit. It's amazing. I love this guy. That guy right there knows what's up. All right, moving on. At the close of 20.1, 239,106 athletes registered for the 10th CrossFit Open, according to numbers provided by CrossFit Inc. CrossFit also said that between the two Opens this year, a combined 450,386 individual athletes signed up to participate. We're going to get back to that in a second because that's, that's important. One big thing, this is actually a net financial win for CrossFit. With two Opens in a single year, there were a combined 597,752 total signups, which is about 181,000 more signups than the 2018 Open. That is $3.6 million more in revenue compared to 2018, which was the peak for the, 20, uh, for the Open revenue, right? The big picture, the reduced number of signups isn't too surprising given the move from late February to October, and it's also the second open of the year, which is a lot to ask of affiliates. The important thing to note is where the numbers are next year. And uh, this little part right here by the numbers takes a look at the, the years all the way through every open that has happened in terms of participation. We're going to start at the bottom here. 2011 had 26,000 participants, 2012 had 70,000. 2013 had 140,000, 2014 had 209,948, 2015 was 273,257, 2016, 324,307, 2017, 380,000, 2018, the peak, 416,000, 2019, 358,646, and the 2020 open, 239,106. Now, there are a couple huge numbers here. It's really easy to kind of lose track of why or what it is we're even talking about. But there's a few things that are important to point out. First of all, the open outside of a handful of people that actually participate year after year after year tends to have a lot of churn. And we now actually have a pretty decent number to look at when we talk about that churn. So at the top here, you know, CrossFit mentioned 239,106 athletes signed up for the 2020 Open. We had uh, 358,646 for the 2019 Open. That's a total of 597,752 signups, but only 450,386 different individuals, right? So unique individual athletes signing up is 450,000-ish, but total total athletes is just under 600,000. So really what you're looking at here, that delta, that 150,000 is probably the core people who are signing up year after year. That that number um is is, you know, obviously subject to change, but that's that's an interesting number to look at, right? Because what you're seeing there is these are the people who, you know, are actually in it and don't have to be convinced or um, you know, marketed to very aggressively in order to give their 20 bucks over to uh, to participate in the open. Now, the other side of that is if we know that there are 150,000 like core diehards that are going to sign up for the open, basically no matter what, where do the other 300,000 or so individual athletes that signed up for the open come from? And I think the biggest answer to that is, you know, the marketing push around the open over the years has been very, very strong and was even quite strong early this year in the 2019 open, but absent completely for the 2020 open because 
there is no big social media space for CrossFit to directly communicate to the people that might be signing up for the open. So you don't have the Facebook page, you don't have the Instagram, um, you don't have the the marketing arms and the media and creative arms that are going to help push this like revenue generating proposition for CrossFit Inc. So that 300,000 or so athletes that are new, individual, different athletes other than the 150,000 that we're kind of looking at as the repeat participants, the people who are just going to be doing it basically no matter what, those those are people that are more transient in their participation. They may have participated in the past. They may participate again in the future, but they're not going to necessarily just do it to do it. They're going to need some sort of a a push. They're going to need some sort of like communication. That communication can come from the affiliates, right? The affiliates could be communicating to their members. Hey, this is the open. We do it every year. You sign up, it's 20 bucks. We don't get any of it. It goes to CrossFit. CrossFit uses that money to put on the CrossFit games, whatever. So, you know, there's, there's definitely this argument that perhaps the dip can be explained by the, you know, lack of marketing, you know, uh, that, that I think is really important. I mentioned that in, uh, in one of my previous videos and I hesitate to call it lack of marketing because it really is, is more than just like, oh, they're not doing marketing. It's, it's really a shift in CrossFit's strategy as a corporation, um, you know, for what they're trying to focus on. And, and Justin makes a really good observation here, which is, you know, the, the amount of people who signed up for the open in the calendar year, 2019, between the two different opens is actually a positive 180 ish thousand more people signed up, uh, than more signups occurred compared to the 2018 open. So that's a lot more money. It's about $3.6 million more that CrossFit is making in this calendar year. Now it remains to be seen whether that continues You know, we now have a full season, a full year between the 2020 Open and the 2021 Open, and it's going to be certainly an interesting proposition to see whether that trend continues. Like, are there going to be, is there going to be an uptick in the number of people that are participating in the Open? Is there going to be sort of like the same growth trend that we saw before, but now it's been reset back down to 240,000, which is kind of a little bit less than where we were in 2015? Those are those are uh, you know questions that we can only answer down the road, right? But without the marketing arm and the media arm of CrossFit pushing open signups, without that spend and that energy and that um, you know effort to make that happen, and the fact that it's moved to a different part of the year, um, which is something that I really didn't even think about. It didn't really affect me um, in any way to go from like spring to. Um, you know, fall other than the fact that it's, you know, Halloween is happening during the open and my wife's birthday is happening during the open. Nothing really changed for me. But when I was talking to some of the affiliate owners in Whistler at the 10 year affiliate gathering, some of them made really good points, which is fall uh, tends to be football season, especially in the South in the U S and uh, you know, when generally speaking, these gyms would do like Friday night uh, competitions for, you know, the entire gyms, the affiliates population to compete in and participate in these Friday night lights events. There actually are Friday night lights going on for everyone's kids that are playing high school football in the South. So that's going to be, you know, a a, a dip that's going to make a difference in the participation. If you suddenly have conflicting events in your family, um, and in your, uh, you know, personal life, that's going to kind of change the way that you have to approach this thing. Like if the core participation sell for the affiliates to their members is, Hey, we're going to do this really cool in-house competition. You know, this company is going to come sponsor it and you're going to be able to get like, you know, free this or get, you know, discounted this. If that kind of goes away, you have to find a new way of incentivizing people to participate. And maybe that means moving it to a different time over the weekend. Maybe that means, you know, opening up the way that you participate in the open, uh, whether it's like, oh, well, now we're just doing it during class and then the, the vibe is different. So those types of differences, just purely based on the fact that the open is in a different time of year, those are maybe going to add up a little bit. Um, but I, I really think the big push, the big reason why we see a dip in participation isn't necessarily because people are tired of the changes that CrossFit have been going through. Because again, the February open took place months, like five months, um, almost six months after 
the CrossFit Games season completely changed. Everyone already knew that there were not going to be any more regionals. Everyone already knew that the games were going to look different. Everyone already knew that sanctionals were going to be the new sort of like qualifying step for the CrossFit Games. And yet we still had a really huge participation. I mean, the 358,000 compared to 416,000 2019 to 2018, that's not that big of a dip. Um, you know, it is a bit of a dip, but it's not that big of a dip, especially considering again, CrossFit HQ, by the time that the, the sort of ramp up period for the 2019 open came around, did not have a media team anymore, did not have a group of people whose entire job it was to sell the CrossFit community on this entire uh, situation of participating in the open. So, you know, my guess is we're probably going to see the trend sort of reset um, after a year, a full long season, we'll probably see a little bit of growth going into the next season. It's not going to jump immediately back to where it was in you know, 2018, but it certainly is going to jump a bit, I think, because as long as the games are still around, as long as CrossFitters are still interested in competitive CrossFit, the Open is going to have you know, a part to play in that. And whether or not it succeeds in the long run, I mean, that's going to be that's going to be a, a question that only can be answered down the road. Uh, CrossFit itself is kind of shifting its focus, and perhaps that means they're going to not do the open at some point. It's kind of hard to say that because you're talking about like losing millions of dollars uh, that you're you're basically raking in for just having like a great you know participatory event. Um, so I have a hard time thinking that they're just going to completely get rid of the open, but perhaps the open is going to shift around and change and only become a playground for serious competitors or, you know, only become a playground for, you know, affiliates who want to compete against one another in like some sort of affiliate ranking. I I don't know. Um, I, I, I can imagine situations in which really, really big things happen to like the entire structure of CrossFit HQ and the entire structure of, of what they're doing with like the events in terms of the open and the games. And, you know, then everything's off the table and it doesn't really matter what the open participation number is. But right now, in terms of a sort of look at CrossFitters interest in participating with the, and interacting with the, um, CrossFit game season, we have 240,000 people ish signed up compared to 358,000, um, earlier this year. And, uh, you know, that's two opens in seven months. It's gonna, it's gonna wear people down. I think, uh, we've got to wait to see what happens in the 2021 open. We've got to keep our eyes open for any sort of potential major changes down the road that could absolutely gut or blow up the participation metrics, uh, for the open. And, uh, on top of that, you know, the, the big question remains whether CrossFit even cares about, you know, continuing something like the open. If, if the competitive aspect isn't, you know, the main driver of what HQ does and what they want to focus on, who's to say that they are even going to continue participating in putting on the open, right? Either way, folks, there's a whole lot going on in our sport and it's easy to miss some of the most interesting and exciting stories. That is what I am here for. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, go on to armandhammer.tv. You can buy yourself some sweet merch. You can uh, you can buy like a BRP pocket tee, like what I'm wearing right now, or a hat or something like that. In case you can't tell, this guy, this logo, that's that guy right there. It's based off of that exact pinata. So hopefully you guys you know think that's as cool as I think that's cool. Um, but if you don't want merch, you can also go to armandhammer.tv slash support and just uh, straight up support and subscribe to the channel. Like, you know, 9 15 $21 a month goes a long way to this content continuing on. For those of you who are already supporting me, it means a lot to me. Uh, and you guys know who you are. I really appreciate it. Um, if you do like this show and you don't want to you know, buy something, that's totally fine. Just like, share, subscribe, tell your friends about it. Let's keep this conversation going. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time.